friends, it is Saturday and um, it's a Saturday where I don't have to go anywhere, which I love those kinds of Saturdays. I already finished all of my outside chores, my farm chores with the animals, which was actually quite enjoyable because the weather is beautiful. It's getting to be like over 60 during the day with sunshine. What? Did we do it together? Yeah. Yeah, we worked so hard. Levi helped me so much. We did so good. And now I am turning my attention to the kitchen and trying to get some food prep done. I have a ton of stuff in my refrigerator that just needs to be made into edible form. There's lots of ingredients, lots of different things, pieces, but no one is going to grab them out of the fridge to eat unless I do something to them to make them a little more enjoyable. I have a bunch of broccoli that I cooked up yesterday and I thought that a broccoli cheddar soup would be really good. So I'm gonna to try to make that. And then if I make a soup, I'm gonna to have to make some kind of a bread, um, egg white bread, of course. I haven't made any in a while, so this is gonna be fun. Um, I'm not sure what kind I will make. I was, I wanna make some pizza crusts at some point, like try to do some freezer pizza crusts so I can pull them out every once in a while when I need some. But I, pizza crust isn't exactly what will go with the broccoli cheddar soup. Maybe I'll make a batch and I'll freeze some as pizza crust just uh, for a test because I'd like to get a technique down, not necessarily a recipe because I, I have the recipes pretty well nailed down, but just um, a technique of like how long to par bake it and how it works after it's frozen, stuff like that. So maybe I'll do a big batch of bread, make some of it into rolls or buns or something like that to have with the soup and then some of it into some freezer pizza crusts to do as a test. Um, first thing I need to do though before I get to the soup is to make some broth and I have some bone in skin on chicken thighs. I'm going to take the skin off because why would you waste that in chicken broth when you can make crispy chicken skin with it. I will air fry the chicken skins and then I will use the um, chicken thighs with the bones in them to make some broth and then we will go from there. In the soup, I'm gonna do bacon. So it'll be bacon, cheddar, broccoli soup. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the bacon started cooking. I'll get it all crisped up and then that will leave me with a whole bunch of bacon grease that I'll be able to use for um, like frying chicken strips and stuff at another point. got about two cups of bacon grease, which will cook up a lot of chicken strips, chicken nuggets, onion rings, fish sticks, all that kind of good stuff. My chicken thighs are still a little bit frozen, so let's see how far I can get. I can at least get the um, skin off and get some into the Instant Pot to make the broth with. So I'm doing, I'm taking the skin off of all of them. And then I'm gonna throw some into the Instant Pot with the bone to make the broth with. And then I'm gonna debone some of them because we're having a taco movie night tomorrow night. And uh, we needed some boneless, skinless chicken thighs for taco, ch taco chicken. So um, probably like, probably do like half, like five for the broth and five for the, the taco chicken. So I'm just going to cover these chicken thighs with water, add some salt and pepper. I'm not going to do anything fancy with the broth because I'll be adding lots of spices to the soups. So I'm just going to keep the broth really simple. Big sprinkle of salt and a medium sprinkle of pepper. And so when I make chicken broth, if time is no issue, 
I'll cook it for a couple of hours, but it's good and usable after like 20, 30 minutes. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do 30 minutes on, oops, on, come on. Why is it not going to? There we go, high pressure, 30 minutes. My one complaint about this Instant Pot is the obnoxious beeping. Um, 30 minutes, high pressure, and it is almost two, and I haven't had lunch yet, so I am going to make myself some lunch real quick. I actually have some um, keto chow ice cream prepped in my Ninja Creamy containers in the freezer. I think I'm just gonna make that for lunch, and then the soup and the bread will be dinner. So last night I prepped Oh, no, I need to remember. Oh, maple waffle. And I used sour cream as the fat. And then I also prepped mint chocolate and I added some black cocoa to make like a grasshopper chocolate mint. Thought that sounded really good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. I used um, heavy cream in this one for the fat. Let's see how it is. That looks good. Let me see. Let me see if it tastes good. Oh my gosh. That is delicious. It's like Oreo. It's like mint Oreo. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So the recipe for this is, um, well, I have a, a way that I've found that I like keto chow ice cream the best so far. And of course, different flavors can be different as far as how much sweetness you need and stuff. But this is my baseline that I do. One packet of keto chow, any flavor. One cup of water, so eight ounces. Six ounces of heavy cream. And since I'm not eating, I don't usually just sit down and eat a whole serving or like a whole packet's worth of ice cream as a meal. I kind of just eat it, eat like half. So it's a lot of fat. So if I was gonna just sit and eat this whole thing, it would be a pretty, pretty calorie dense meal. And then 25 to 30 grams of allulose. And then to this one, I just added one and a half teaspoons of the black cocoa powder. That's like Oreo flavored. And uh, that was it. The texture on this is so, so good. It It's so creamy and like custardy. It's almost like frozen frosting or something. Obviously it doesn't have as much fat as frosting, but like the texture is just, super, super custardy and thick. It's so good. So here's my first batch of chicken skins. I have the second batch in the air fryer right now. And I actually just went ahead and filmed a little short of how to do the chicken skins because I'd done them in a, um, a food prep video and I've done turkey skins as a short recipe, but I'd never done the chicken skins as a short recipe. So I have that filmed and so you'll be seeing that soon. And I'll go ahead and add it to my recipe blog as well. So you can find the link to that down in the description. So my broth back there is gonna beep in just a second. It's almost done. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the bread. And I think I'm just gonna make a batch of my next level butter bread. I'm gonna skip the yeast and the rising. That's a great step to add like flavor and it's fun but it does take a lot more time and I just want to keep it a little more simple today. So I'm just doing the next level butter bread with the shredded butter in there. And I'm going to do half of it as the pizza crust that I will put into the freezer and then I'll do half of it as rolls. Also, if I have time, I will make another batch of the next level butter bun recipe and do the same thing, half as pizza crust, half as buns. And um, that'll give me a couple of good pizza crusts in the freezer to just see which one works better um, as I experiment with that. And then once I get that all nailed down, I will do a whole video dedicated to freezer pizza crusts, but that will be a good experiment. Um, so I am just going to get this next level butter bread recipe mixed up and going.
Okay, I have my um, ice cream scoop coated in coconut oil. And I'm gonna scoop out some buns first and then do the rest as pizza crust. Just make sure it's all incorporated real fast. And my oven is preheated to 325. And of course, buns and pizza crust are gonna take a lot less time than a loaf of bread. So I'll probably start checking at about 15 minutes. And then for the pizza crust, I am going to par bake them. So those will probably only cook for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so, just until they're like solid. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in to the oven. Don't they just look so perfect and satisfying? Oh my gosh, I love it. Gonna throw these in, start checking them at about 15 minutes. All right, I wanna do personal size pizza crusts because I'm just thinking I want these to just sit in the freezer and whenever I want a quick lunch, I can pull one out and um, top it real quick, maybe cook it in the air fryer, cook in the oven, not sure just whatever works. So let's see, I'm gonna just spread this out. I like a pretty thin pizza crust, so I'll just try to make it as thin as possible. Okay, scratch that. This ended up being like a full-size, almost a full-sized pizza, which I would probably say is about two servings. Okay, with this last bit of batter, I think I can get two actual personal-sized pizzas here. Okay, I have one round and one oval. And the oval one was reminding me of flat out wraps. Did you guys ever eat those? I don't know if they they still make them, but I, I remember getting them at, at uh, Winco, no, Walmart. I would get them at Walmart back when I first started low carb and use them you know, for wraps or for pizza or things like that. Anyways, hadn't thought of those in a long time, but the oval uh, pizza crust made me think of it. Okay, pizza crusts going in at 325, probably for about 10 minutes, just until they're firm, uh, firm enough to be able to remove from the pan and not, you know, still be like fluffy. We'll see how long it takes. While those are cooking, I am going to go ahead and whip up my uh, butter bun recipe. And so it'll be ready to pop into the oven as soon as those are done. Um, so if you're not familiar with my butter bread versus my butter bun recipe, a lot of the ingredients are the same. There's just a little bit different of a ratio and the butter buns also have acacia fiber in them and that it, it's just more of a dense texture. It's kind of almost bagel-like. I was wondering about making bagels with this recipe. I think it would work out really well. Um, the bread recipe is more fluffy and it's just a little bit lighter. And I think the, the butter bun recipe works really well if you use it like a bagel, where you just put a spread of cream cheese on it or something and just eat it like that. I like the fluffier bread for like sandwiches just because it's easier to bite through, you know, like a, a whole sandwich made with it. But I like the butter buns kind of on their own or with just like one topping. So they are very similar, but there's just that little bit difference of a texture. And so you kind of just have to try them and see which ones you like better for different applications. So here is the butter bun batter. It is stiffer than the um, than the bread batter, which makes it easy to work with as far as like making scoops. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I guess I'll just do eight buns here and then I will do some pizza crusts. Yes, Levi. Can I tell you who's playing? Who's, be, who's going to be crazy in the video? Okay. Bob and Izzy. I thought it was you. It will be Bob and Izzy. Yeah, they're pretty crazy sometimes. They're Bob and Yeah. What happened to my cookie? So here are the rolls from the butter bread recipe. And I just think they turned out so perfectly adorable. I love it. But they all stick together. Isn't that fun? They're called pull apart rolls. 
So I failed on these ones. They were on a lower rack and I wasn't paying attention and the bottom got brown enough. So I'll probably not freeze these ones. I'll probably just top them with something and then broil them. I could save them in the fridge and then top them with something and broil them and then um, try not to get the, the bottom any browner, but they'll still get eaten. They're just not a really good test because I, I messed up. This one was on the higher rack and I think it'll work out, although it's kind of big, so it might be a little difficult, but I think I'll be able to freeze this one or at least maybe I could cut it in half and freeze the halves and then I'll be able to um, just get an idea of how it works. Yeah, the bottom of that one looks a lot better. That's This is how I wanted it. Handleable, but not really browned at all yet. Broth is finished. I'm gonna separate the broth from the chicken and then I will get started on the soup. Gotta saute up the onions first. And this um, chicken that's on the bone here, I will just shred it up I probably won't put it in the soup. I think I'd rather just have it be a broccoli cheddar with bacon soup, but the shredded chicken will get used for something. Maybe some chicken salad. I have not made chicken salad in a while and that sounds really good. Oh, those rolls just look so cute. I love it. I'm gonna use my Dutch oven here that I cooked the bacon in, so it'll have all the flavor in there that I can saute the onions in. For seasoning, I am just going to add some random stuff out of my cabinet that I know will taste good. I'm going to add some of the organic seasoned salt from Redmond, some black pepper, some more granulated garlic, some granulated onion, and then I love adding Creole seasoning to my soups. I add, I add it to almost every soup I make. It just gives like this really good kick of flavor. If you add a lot, it'll make it spicy, but if you add a little bit, it just, just turns the flavor up really, really well. So we'll see how that is. I can always adjust and add more later on. I put in three cups of broth. I want this soup to be pretty thick because I would rather not use a thickener if I don't have to. I think the cheese and the cream that I use to make it creamy will be enough um, if I don't add too much broth. Obviously the broccoli is already really cooked, but I'm just going to let it simmer for a couple minutes before I add in the cream and the cheese. Okay, so I'm gonna put in about one and a half cups of cheese. This is just like Mexican blend shredded cheese. And the dogs are having an epic battle behind me, so you might hear that as well. And then this is about a half a cup of heavy cream. Just let this melt and heat up, and that's pretty much it. And then, of course, there's the bacon, but I'd rather have that crunchy on top of the soup so I will not mix it in. Okay, I just realized what this soup needed. Cheese powder. The kids love this on their popcorn, um, but I think it would be really good in a cheesy soup. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna put in, I'll put in about a quarter cup and see what that does. It's definitely gonna give it some color. Um, so you can't have the pizza crust because that has eggs, but I made you some crispy chicken skin. You want to try some? I, I want them to... Mmm. It's good. You like it? I want like to eat them. Yeah? How many? All, All of them? Yeah. But don't you want to save some for anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. For dad. Oh, for dad. What about Renee? She loves them. Yeah. Yeah. How many thumbs up do you give that chicken skin? A hundred. A hundred hundred? Yeah. Wow. Amazing. It sounds very crunchy. It is. Yeah. Mm. 
Why eat them all day? You want to eat them all day? Yeah. Yeah, it sounds sounds like a good life. Wow. Soup is done. I tasted it and it was perfect the way it was. The flavor is so good. I think that mm. cheese powder added some really, really good flavor. And I was just realizing that this video is almost a soup and bread of the week video. Um, you guys that have been around for a year or so, do you guys remember and those videos? Skin. And chicken skin. Yeah, soup and bread and chicken skin of the week. Um, do you guys remember those videos? I did them for a couple months and they were really fun. And then the weather got warmer and so I shifted away from it and I never picked it back up again. Uh, let me know if you guys like those kinds of videos or if there's any other kinds of series, serieses that you guys would like to see. I really would love to do like a condiment series, sauces and things like that. Um, just because there's so many good keto sauce recipes out there. Oh, there's my butter buns. And it would be really fun to put together a collection of recipes and videos about all the good condiments. Let me know what you guys think about that as well. So these are the butter buns. They kind of have a bumpier texture than the bread, the bread buns, which is interesting. I cooked these ones for 30 minutes um, and I thought they looked, they looked pretty good. These ones I cooked for 25 minutes, so a little less and they are a little lighter. I probably could have cooked these a little longer, but I didn't want to risk drying them out. And of course we have a giant pile of bacon so that you can have an actual generous serving of bacon on the soup. It's a pet peeve of mine when bacon is a topping on something and it's like the tiniest little minuscule amount. It just offends me. I got a salad mix a while back and I was putting that together and there it was supposed to be like bacon ranch something. And like the packet of bacon, I mean, it was like five little pieces, like, like that big for a whole salad that was supposed to be like six to eight servings. It was so offensive. So anyways, we have enough bacon. I think I cooked two pounds of bacon. Um, so there is plenty. So the soup can actually have a decent amount of bacon in each bite. Levi, did you eat all of that chicken skin? You stinker, you were supposed to leave some for me. So here is the butter bun batter made into pizza crusts. Just a tiny bit brown on the bottom, but this is perfect for putting in the freezer. Um, so I'm gonna throw those in the freezer. And then of course, this is my bread. It is softer like this one. I think this one's gonna work better for the freezer recipe. That's my guess so far. Um, just because it's just got a little more firmness to it. So it's not gonna fall apart as easily. I think I'm probably once, uh, these are pretty much cool right now. So I could just go throw this into the freezer, let these freeze solid, and then I'll take them off and put them into like a Ziploc bag or something. This one I'll probably have to wrap somehow since it's so big, uh, but I'll do the same thing. I'll just throw it into the freezer like this. I'll probably just set it right on top of here like this, throw that all in the freezer. And once it's frozen, then try to wrap it up. Cause I think I'll just ruin it if I try to wrap it up now. Um, but I'm not going to do any more on the pizza crust in this video. I will continue to experiment. And once I get a technique nailed down, I will do a dedicated video on the freezer pizza crust. I've also wanted to do, I've got so many ideas and so little time, but I've also wanted to do a series of freezer cooking, like keto freezer cooking. Now that I have my um, protein breading recipe, I could do a big batch of freezer chicken nuggets, freezer chicken strips, different things like that. Um, and that would just be so nice to have stocked up in the freezer so you can pull out a few and air fry them for an easy lunch um, just at a moment's notice. So thinking about that kind of a series as well coming up.